Hello students how are you all this is anup sir your english teacher students in this video we are going to start our new lesson that is packing for class 9 which is written by jerome k jerome students before we begin let me give you a small introduction about this lesson packing is a story about three friends who are getting ready to go for a journey it follows the packing session of three friends jerome harris and george thus it begins with them starting the most important thing of a journey that is packing this story is an extract taken from three men in a boat by jerome k jerome in here Jerome is the narrator himself and writes about the experience he has while his friends decide to start packing further it takes us on a hilarious ride about three adults who struggle to do a basic thing as packing packing will take you through the new sense they experience in addition to their dog montmorency's contribution similarly it also shows how his other two friends are not the great one when it comes to packing so students let's begin with the lesson i said i'd pack i rather pride myself on my packing packing is one of those many things that i feel i know more about than any other person living it surprises me myself sometimes how many such things there are i impressed the fact upon george and harris and told them that they had better leave the whole matter entirely to me they fell into the suggestion with a readiness that had something uncanny about it george spread himself over the easy chair and harris cocked his legs on the table students here pride myself on means am proud of fell into means here accepted the word uncanny means strange weird cocked his legs means bent the legs on the knee as he sat so students in the beginning of this lesson out of three friends jerome who's the narrator of this lesson thinks that his ability to pack luggage was better than others he asked his friends george and harris to leave the task of packing to him that is on jerome himself the two friends agreed to his offer instantly which was strange to jerome george sat comfortably on the easy chair and harris bent his knees as he sat on the sofa and kept his feet on the table this was hardly what i intended what i had meant of course was that i should boss the job and that harris and george should potter about under my directions i pushing them aside every now and then with oh you here let me do it there you are simply enough really teaching them as you might say they're taking it in the way they did irritated me there is nothing does irritate me more than seeing other people sitting about doing nothing when i am working students here the word intended means planned or meant potter about means do some unimportant things so students by saying that he would pack the writer did not mean that his friends would sit and relax while he would do all the work of packing 
he meant that he would boss upon them that means he would tell them how to do the packing and those two friends that is george and harris would actually do the packing and in between when george and harris would not be able to do the packing work properly he would scold them nag them and actually show them how to do it properly but now jerome was irritated to see them sit while he was doing all the work he did not like people sitting around when he was busy doing the work i lived with a man once who used to make me mad that way he would loll on the sofa and watch me doing things by the hour together he said it did him real good to look on at me messing about now i am not like that i can't sit still and see other men slaving and working i want to get up and superintend and walk around with my hands in my pockets and tell him what to do it is my energetic nature i can't help it students here loll on the sofa means to recline or lean in a relaxed manner messing about means to waste time doing something without a particular purpose sit still means sit without doing anything and the word superintend means supervise or manage so students jerome recollects that once he lived with a man who would sit lazily on the sofa all day long and would watch the writer do all the work the man would say that he enjoyed watching him go around doing all the work this would make the writer mad with anger the writer adds that he could not sit idle and watch others work like slaves on the other hand he liked to check their work walk around with his hands in his pocket and direct them on how to do the work properly he feels that as he was energetic it was a part of his nature to behave in that manner so students here the writer is trying to put humor in this lesson at this point when jerome says that he cannot sit idle but he has to work hard in directing other people's do the work properly however i did not say anything but started the packing it seemed a longer job than i had thought it was going to be but i got the bag finished at last and i sat on it and straped it aren't you going to put the boots in said harris and i looked around and i found i had forgotten them that's just like harris he couldn't have said a word until i'd got the bag shut and straped of course and george laughed one of those irritating senseless laughs of his they do make me so wild students here straped it means closed it and the word wild means mad with anger so students the writer did not say anything to his friends and started the packing work he did all the work of packing and at last he sat on the bag and straped it with lot of difficulties because there were lot of things inside the bag when he was finished with the straping of the bag at last harris says are you not going to put those boots inside the bag jerome looks around and finds that he has forgotten to pack the boots so he gets angry and thinks that harris could have said that before straping the bag but this is harris he never says important things on the right time 
and this was followed by an irritating laughter by George, which made Jerome very angry. I opened the bag and packed the boots in, and then, just as I was going to close it, a horrible idea occurred to me. Had I packed my toothbrush? I don't know how it is, but I never do know whether I have packed my toothbrush. So students, Jerome opened the bag to keep the boots in it. As he was about to close the bag, he was struck by a strange thought that had he kept the toothbrush or not. He says that he never remembers if he has packed the toothbrush or not. My toothbrush is a thing that haunts me when I'm traveling and makes my life a misery. I dream that I haven't packed it and I wake up in a cold perspiration and get out of bed and hunt for it. And in the morning, I pack it before I have used it and have to unpack again to get it. And it is always the last thing I turn out of the bag and then I repack and forget it and have to rush upstairs for it at the last moment and carry it to the railway station wrapped up in my pocket handkerchief. Students, here the word haunts means to repeatedly give trouble. The word misery means sad. Cold perspiration means sweat. And the word hunt means search. So students, Jerome adds that while traveling, he always messes up with carrying his toothbrush. He has nightmares of not having packed it, wakes up in sweat and looks for it. In the morning, he packs it before using it, then unpacks the bag to get the brush and uses it. As it is the last thing that comes out of the bag and he has repacked the bag. He forgets packing it again. At the last moment, he rushes to his room to get the brush and finally he wraps it in his handkerchief and carries it to the railway station in his pocket. Of course, I had to turn every mortal thing out now and of course, I could not find it. I rummaged the things up into much the same state that they must have been before the world was created and when chaos reigned. Of course, I found George and Harris 18 times over, but I couldn't find my own. I put the things back one by one and held everything up and shook it. Then I found it inside a boot. I repacked once more. Students, here, mortal thing means every ordinary thing. The word rummaged means searched in a hurried or careless way. The word chaos means confusion. And the word reigned means ruled. So students, Jerome was looking for his toothbrush. He had to take each and everything out of his bag, but he couldn't find it. He created a mess. He found his friend's toothbrushes many times, but he could not find his own brush. He kept each and everything back inside the bag one by one shaking it, holding it upwards, but he could not find it. At last, he found the brush inside a boot. Then once again, he had to repack the bag. When I had finished, George asked if the soap was in. I said I didn't care a hang whether the soap was in or whether it wasn't. And I slammed the bag shut and straped it, and found that I had packed my spectacles in it, and had to reopen it, 
I got shut up finally at 10.5 p.m. And then there remained the hampers to do. Harris said that we should be wanting to start in less than 12 hours time and thought that he and George had better to do the rest. And I agreed and sat down and they had a go. Students here didn't care a hang means show no concern or interest. The word slammed means shut the lid forcefully and loudly. The word hampers means baskets used to carry food, utensils, etc. So students, now when Jerome closed the bag, George asked if the soap was there inside it. As Jerome was impatient, he replied that he wasn't concerned if it was there or not. Closed the lid and scraped the bag. Then he realized that he had packed the spectacles in it too and had to reopen it again to get them out. So he opened the bag, got his spectacles and finally packed the bag at 10.5 p.m. Then they had to pack the food basket. Harris said that as they were left with less than 12 hours to leave. They should pack the baskets as well. Harris decided that the food baskets would be packed by him and George. Jerome agreed to take his turn for some rest while his friends packed the baskets. So students, this is all about this video. We will continue this lesson that is the rest half of this lesson in the next video. Till then, this is Anup sir saying thank you and goodbye.